Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Charlotte and I do DIY and sewing videos. Today we're going to be recreating another Orson Iris top. I do have another video for an Orson Iris tank top. I'll leave a link up here so you guys can go check that out. But for today, we're going to be making the Le Club top, which is this kind of t-shirt cropped with a tie, open back, and it's super cute. I believe on the website it comes in black cream polka dot pattern, not sure if that's still available, and a pink all beautiful colors. If you would like to purchase the original top, I'll be linking it down below. Um, but that is what inspired today's a DIY make. So let's get started. To create the pattern, I grabbed a relaxed fit t-shirt and used that as a base to trace and create a pattern. You wanna make sure your top is perfectly flat and you will want to trace along the seams. You will need a front piece, a split back piece, and a sleeve piece. The sleeve I extended in length to accommodate for the folds at the end, so about two to three inches. And for the front pattern piece, you'll want to add approximately two inches to either side to accommodate for the gathers underneath the bust. We are in this sewing room now. Pattern is done and we need to pick a fabric. I'm not too sure. I think. Maybe for today we'll go with the black. It seems to be a good starting color and I think I'll get a lot of use out of it. Plus if I make mistakes, it may not be as noticeable. <laughs> Let's start cutting our pieces. To create the strap and finishing bias pieces, you'll want to cut on the bias of your fabric and create these strips. You will need wider strips for the super long strap that wraps around the torso and slightly thinner ones for the neckline and back of the shirt. These are all the pieces you should have to start sewing and you will also need two snap buttons to finish off your top as well. As always, a detailed blog post will be linked in the description box below with more details and dimensions. Be sure to check that out. All the pieces are prepped and ready to go. I have to run, so this is it for today. But the pieces are prepped, we're ready to go the next day um, for assembly. Welcome back guys, it is Sunday, back in the sewing room. I took yesterday off to do some exploring downtown and stuff. Yeah, it was really nice out yesterday, so I didn't want to be inside. For the majority of the project remaining and all the sewing that I'm going to be doing, I'm probably going to be just using the serger. You don't need a serger. You can definitely do all these steps on a sewing machine. I'm just really lazy because it's just kind of like a one go and the edge is done. So I'll be doing this. If you end up using a sewing machine, I recommend either trying French seams. I believe that's what they're called or you could just do a straight stitch and then a zigzag stitch to uh, finish off the end so there's no fraying. To create the gathers, you will need to sew two basting or gathering lines along the bottom of the front piece with a long stitch length. I used a stitch length of around five. and then taking the two top threads, gently pull to gather the fabric to the bust area on either side. I found it helpful to have notches in place to identify where the gathers would go for the under bust area. Next, you will want to sew the shoulder seams with the good sides facing. I just did this on the serger, um, but you can do a French seam or just stitch it normally on your sewing machine. Next, you'll want to pin and sew the sleeves with the good sides facing, making sure to line up the center of the shoulder with the center of the sleeve. <music> After
after attaching on the sleeves, you'll want to sew up the side seams and this will create the base of your top. Ended up modifying the straps or the binding, binding tape, bias tape, bias tape to be a little thicker. This was the original one right here. And I ironed all of them folded in half. So I made them a little bit thicker. This is two and a quarter inch folded in half. I think it looks a lot better for the tie part um, because we will be taking away just a little bit of it. So it should be like three quarters of an inch final width. These are the two sizes. Um, we're gonna go with the thicker ones. So I'll leave the dimensions for what I used in a blog post down below. To finish off this split back opening, I took a one inch strip of the bias cut fabric, ironed and folded it in half and surged it to the back edge and then top stitched it into place. Here's an up close look of what it should look like when it's done. I didn't really film a lot of it, but this is what it should look like. For the main torso strap, I will walk through how I did it in this video, but there is a much better way to finish the strap looking back now as I'm editing this video. So I'll leave details of the other method in a blog post linked below, but essentially I should have used the same technique as I used for the neckline, which is shown later in this video, but you live and learn. The way I did it here was that I created a super long strap by attaching multiple pieces together and then sewing it into a tube. I then proceeded to flip it inside out with my handy strap turning tool. At this point, the strap is still a bit bumpy and lumpy, so a quick press and ironing session got the strap to lay flat. It should have a super clean finish all the way around with no visible stitching, except for where you might have attached two strips of fabric together to make it even longer. So taking the strap's midpoint, I lined it up to the center of the front of the top, and to attach the strap to the top, I top stitched it down the entire length of the strap with a straight stitch, and that's how you finish it off. So working on the neckline, you wanna take a piece of the bias cut strap and iron it into a bias tape form. So this is what I should have done for the strap thing that you just saw. Um, but you want to use this method, it will provide a much cleaner finish to your top. Just for reference, bias tape folds in on itself and it would be best for you to iron and prep this strip of fabric as a double folded bias tape for sewing and then you want to sew the first edge down on the inside of the top. Iron and press everything and then fold it over and then top stitch on the outside for a clean finish. So to finish off the back of the shirt at the neck, you're gonna wanna leave about three quarters of an inch to an inch of length where you will be hand stitching on snap buttons. And you just wanna hand stitch this in. I just decided to stitch it in a way where it wouldn't appear on the other side of the bias tape finish. Okay, so here is a quick fit check. Um, I already tried it on earlier, but it was like way too wide on the sides. And what ended up happening was when I would tie the back portion there, like back here, it would overlap too much. So I ended up taking it in just on the side here, a touch, so now it fits well. And when I raise my arms, my boobs don't pop out. So that's nice. I finished adding on the strap and the neck right here, if you can see that. And I still need to stitch on one last snap button and then I need to do the folded portion of the sleeves. The back is really nice though. The last part of this tutorial or remake is the sleeve folds. And I totally forgot to film myself tacking the sleeve portion, but here's a closer look at what it looks like finished. And you can see I just folded it in twice and then I also tacked it on the inside so it's not visible on the outside. It's also tacked on the very top and on the armpit section as well. 
definitely want to iron this and steam it down so that it retains its shape when it's being washed and when you just wash it just be very careful to place the material back to how it was before and that's the final result so honestly i love how it turned out but there are definitely improvements i would make in a new version just small things that my perfectionist self sees but yeah enjoy these try on clips and as always you can find more photos of it styled over on my instagram Lost in emotion out of the open Trying to keep my cool That's what I'm used to That's what I'm used to And if you are me Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you end up recreating any of my DIYs or even this one, be sure to use the hashtag deconstruct so I can find all your lovely projects. I love seeing your recreations. It's one of the best parts about doing this. So be sure to tag me and use the hashtag. Um, so I can find your projects and let me know what I should make next down in the comments below and I'll see you guys next time. All right. Bye.